seven different religions, completely different from each other, but all amalgamated and, and cleverly put together. <clears throat> and so this is why if you go to any library or go on the web and start doing your own research and don't just believe the <clears throat> the people who are supposedly your religious leaders in your church who they got what they got from a book and they had to go through and get Caesar, the government, to give them a degree so they had to go to a college or university to become a Christian. <clears throat> Why? Because they, you know, that's how you do it. If you're going to become a Christian minister, you've got to go to college and get a degree, which means that you are now accredited by Caesar, by Tiberius Caesar, the emperor of the empire in Washington, D.C., and he will give you a permit to preach about Jesus and preach about the Christ and preach in your religion. And if you don't have that permit, you better keep your mouth shut because you don't have Caesar's imprimatur on your ministry. So myself, I don't care a damn about Caesar. I don't care anything about the religions of the Romans, the Etruscan peoples that go all the way back into the Phoenician and Canaanite systems in the ancient Middle East. You need to wake up and find out how this world was really put together. But talking about the seven foundations... We won't be able to do a whole lot with it, of course, because there are seven totally different subjects here. But I feel that all seven are represented in Judaism. So let's start with that. First of all, <clears throat> Judaism has within it, uh, all you need to know is just read uh, the, the writings and the reference works, the Jewish encyclopedia, Jewish reference works on the, on the religion. And you'll see that there are seven basic philosophies that make up what we call Judaism. One is the ancient stellar cult. The stellar cult goes back, oh, God knows how many thousands of years ago uh, in that area of the world that we today call the Middle East and Egypt. Stellar cult meant the people who were trying to discover the, the, about God in the stars. And so the stars were the foundation for understanding the universe. You look out into the universe to see God, and what do you see is stars. And so there were intelligent people who started to look at the stars and how they were arranged, and they became known as astrology or astrological worship. And so the correct and proper word was stellar worship or stellar cults. And then uh, that was one facet of Judaism. Now, there was another facet that entered into the world, which was accepted eventually during the A.D., that was accepted and, and amalgamated into the Jewish religion. Uh, we start with the stellar cult. But then there was another cult called the moon cult, or the solar cult. And uh, and so uh, the solar cult was a sun, but the moon cult was the worship of the moon uh, and lunar cult is what I'm trying to say. And so when you see the lunar cult impl impl uh, implications in Judaism becomes overwhelming that uh, whatever way it was put together, Judaism is, is filled with moon worship. <clears throat> and uh, then another uh, worship, uh, that was during the time of what we call Moses. Moses was a lunar uh, worshiper. Moses led the lunar cult. So Moses was, uh, the whole idea of Moses and the religion of Moses is based on the moon worship. Uh, then we have another worship of the ancient world that was also implied in, Ju in Ju Judaism. And in Christianity was the volcano cult, the worship of the Roman and ancient god Vulcan. Vulcan was a volcano god. Volcanoes became very important in the religion of the Middle East at one time. And so that, that has to be added into Judaism. And so you will find in Judaism stellar, or the worship of the stars, astrology. You will find the moon, uh, the lunar cult, 
uh, connected with Moses, then you will find that there's a volcano cult or the worship of the god Vulcan. And this is why Mr. Spock on Star Trek gives us a Vulcan hand sign. And the Vulcan hand sign is the one hand with the fingers divided the way uh, you know, the, uh, Mr. Spock does it. And that dividing of the fingers on the hand like Mr. Spock was based on the volcano cult. That's why he's called a Vulcan. Well, that was part of the Jewish religion. And the dividing of the hand, dividing of the fingers on the hand was a symbol of Aries, the ram. It was a goat's hoof. And then there's also today, very prominent within Judaism, besides the volcano cult, we now also have something called the Saturnian cult, or the worship of the planet Saturn in Judaism. And Saturn seems to be a very big subject today in Judaism. The Jews still worship <clears throat> uh, their, their holy days or after sundown. Well, that has to do with the moon worship. But they also have their Sabbath day. The Sabbath is to, you know, even Christians are told to <clears throat> be, be holy and to keep the Sabbath. Well, the word Sabbath comes from the name, the Phoenician Canaanite name for the planet Saturn. Saturn was not called Saturn. That is our term today for that planet. But in the ancient world, there was a worship of that planet Saturn, but he, it was called Shabbat. S-H-A-B-B-A-T-H was the word for Saturn in the ancient Phoenician Canaanite system. Shabbat. And therefore, if you're going to worship Shabbat, the planet Saturn, you do it on something called Sabbath. So therefore, if you're to holy and keep holy the Sabbath day, is saying, keep holy the worship of the planet Saturn. The planet Saturn is Shabbat, or the worship is on the Sabbath. And this is why today the Jews still <clears throat> worship uh, their god Saturn on Saturn's day. And, and, the, and the day starts after 6 o'clock, and as I said, that comes from the moon cult, because the moon comes out at 6 o'clock. And so today we have the Jews worshiping on the Sabbath, which is Saturn Day. Saturn's day is a Sabbath. And, and Saturn was referred to, the old god Saturn was referred to as the inhibitor, the one who inhibits you. So anything which will hold you back and keep you from doing something, uh, is called Saturnian. It's Saturn in your life. Well, the police department, mafia, governmental uh, uh, fire department, police department, government, military, banking, these are all Saturnian uh, devices because all of them have the power to hold you back and teach you a lesson. And so they can throw you into jail. That's Saturnian. And so the ancient the uh, the uh, ancient people said, well, if Saturn is the inhibitor, the one who holds you back, uh, well, when we're worshiping him, we're not going to do nothing. So therefore, he doesn't have to hold us back. We're not going to do nothing to start with. Period. Because no matter what you do, Saturn's going to hold you back. So why bother? Just stay home and relax and don't even do nothing. So that's what today the Jews do on Sabbath zero much of nothing why because saturn is the inhibitor and he's going to stop you anyway so don't even bother now we go to the next uh, uh, form of worship i i see in uh, judaism christianity and islam is sex worship all three religions are drowning in sex worship it's an incredible uh, hidden story about the foundational beginnings of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam are based on sex, period. And that's everywhere. So it's not just uh, pedophilia in the church. No, 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 no. It goes all the way back to the, uh, the ancient Phoenicians, Canaanites, Sumerians, all the ancient peoples of the world were heavily involved in sex worship. 
Then also in Judaism, we have a sixth different uh, influence, and it's called Yahwehism. And Yahwehism was a worship of a bull, Yahweh, the God Yahweh, the, the holiest of all holy gods, was referred to and pictured in the ancient Phoenician Canaanite in the ancient world as a bull. And this is why today when important things are said by the Pope is called a papal bull, which as far as I'm concerned, it's all full of bull. But Yahweh was a, was a god of bulls. He was a bull worshiper. <clears throat> now, the, the, the last one I think is probably the most pervasive uh, influence in Judaism and also the most important one is the sun worship, the worship of the sun. Now, this one becomes extremely uh, controversial, and I'm going to do a video on this where I will shove it into your face so that there's no one going to be able to say it's uh, that I am making this story up. I'm going to fill this with documents from the Jewish encyclopedia, from all Jewish reference works, from encyclopedias and dictionaries of theology. I'm going to show you how the entire world of mankind on the, on the cutting edge of theology, religion, business, and banking, all of this world that we have built up for ourselves and told ourselves that this is the truth this world that we have built up is based on the worship of the sun pharaoh akhenaten and so today if you go into any synagogue on the earth today it's the symbols will just astound you how overwhelmingly obvious the worship of uh, the sun god of egypt Pharaoh Akhenaten is now the center of worship on all altars of Judaism on the earth, period. No matter what country you go to, no matter where you go to a synagogue, you will always see today something called the Tetragrammaton. The Tetragrammaton are four letters always pictured inside of a sunburst. It's always inside of a circle with the uh, sun rays around the circle, obviously representing the sun. And so in every synagogue on the earth, you walk in, you will see on the altar four Hebrew letters for the name of God, their main name for God. So they say in Judaism that you cannot use the name of God uh, because it's too holy. But they have a word uh, which represents God that it's okay to use. Uh, you don't want to use it a whole lot, but it is all right to use. But you cannot know and you cannot use the very name of God. You can't do that. But you can use this term that, that's okay uh, to, to represent the, the Father God, the great God of, of creation and the Jewish religion. <clears throat> and it's called four Hebrew letters inside a circle with the sun rays. All synagogues show it. It's called the Tetragrammaton. Mm. Tetragrammaton. Tetra is four. Gramma is letters, like A, B, C, D. Uh, letter is gramma. So it's tetra, gramma, aton. A, T, O, N. Tetra, gramma, aton. Or tetragrammaton. Say it fast and you'll, you'll miss the whole story. No, Tetragrammaton is a symbol for God in Judaism today as Tetra for Gramma letters Aton. The Aton was the sun god. Pharaoh Ak Aton. Or Akhenaten? No, it's Aton. T-O-N. So therefore, Everywhere in every synagogue, you will always see the sun with the tetragramma aton. So the bottom line on, on Christianity and Judaism today is the sun. The sun worship with a little bit of the bull worship of Yahweh, uh, with a little bit of the sex worship from all over the Middle East, uh, a little bit of the Saturn worship, worshiping the Saturn, uh, worshiping the planet Saturn on Shabbat or Sabbath, worshiping a little bit of the volcano god, Vulcan, 
And why the volcano god? Because a volcano was a sexual symbol of a female. She's in, and the whole idea of a volcano is a hole in the earth with fire. And so your mother, your mother earth and mother nature, there's a hole in mother nature and a hole in mother earth that's filled with fire. Mm. And so this is the sexual, this is why volcanoes are given female names because a volcano represented a female during sex. It's an explosion of, of, of fire. This is why the pyramid is important in, in the worship today too is because a pyramid, the word pyramid is actually pyra, P-Y-R-A, mid, pyramid. Pyra is fire, mid is the middle. In the ancient world, they realized pyramid meant fire in the middle. And so the fire of sex is in the middle of the human body, the volcano, the female, and uh, or the male, which has to do with sexual symbols of the of the phallic symbol. Uh, and then, of course, you've got the moon worship. We don't want to forget the stellar, uh, the worship of the stars. So I'm just saying, if you really take time about 40 or 50 years and read and study all about the theology and the religions of the world you will find that there's basically seven stellar cult moon worship volcano worship saturn worship sex worship yahweh or the worship of the bull and today sun worship the tetra gramma aton and if you really want to get controversial and stir up some serious trouble, which I don't, but I do, if you really want to stir up some trouble, you can look at that worship of the Aton, the sun symbol in Judaism. And then you begin to see it's now been uh, been transferred into Christianity. And the Christians are now worshiping God's sun, S-U-N. <clears throat> And what, when did they do that? They do that on Sunday. It's mm-hmm. not spelled S-O-N day. It's S-U-N day. It's a day for the worship of the sun. Jesus is referred to as God's sun, the light of the world. Well, of course, the sun is the light of the world. Well, he is our risen Savior. Of course, the sun is your risen Savior. If it doesn't rise, you're dead in three weeks. Mm. So obviously the sun is your risen savior. 